Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is May 11th, 2018. And as I mentioned in last week's video, we're going to uh, this week put together something for the upcoming sales for uh, Sotheby's Christie's and Bonhams over in London. And we're going to look at some of the highlights of the sales today and we're going to look at the Bonhams catalog. They have some interesting things in it. And uh, we uploaded the catalogs the, uh, this week. We generated them. And we've gone to a new, uh, uh, I think, better format on, on catalogs going forward. They'll be uh, enlargeable to a higher resolution. So when you look at them, they won't get blurry, okay? We, that was driving us crazy. And uh, here they all are. They're in the top two rows of the, of, of the bookcase that you see when you're on the forum or you're over at the uh, Dealers and Auctioneers page. And uh, here they are. And we're going to start with the uh, Sotheby's sale, which has this featuring, of course. They're both, both Sotheby's and uh, Christie's are featuring Moonflash this time around in London on their covers. And uh, they're quite different. This is, as you can see, they're both Chen Lung, but this one is a, uh, one of these uh, really elegant, fairly large 19-inch examples. And the uh, 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 Christie's uh, example is a bit smaller and done in enamels. So let's take a look at them. Let's start with this. All right, here is the flask. Uh, this one is uh, fairly similar to the pair that Bonham sold uh, a couple of years ago in Hong Kong that did very well. They happen to come out of an estate here in Massachusetts. And uh, this one has a good long write-up on it in the history. And what's interesting about this one is that the uh, enamel decoration on it, or, or the underglazed blue decoration, rather, is really, really well done. And as I mentioned, this is a big jar. A lot of these are fairly big, 19, 20 inches tall. And here's the decoration. Uh, very powerfully decorated, very intense use of cobalt blue and with perfect shading all the way around, as you can see, all right? And this is what they should look like. Uh, a lot of these are turning up right now, as you know, as copies. We've talked about it uh, on the market. And um, this, is, this is obviously not a copy. It's a, it's a good real one. And it's estimated at about 1.4 to 2 million and change, 2.1 million um, in the auction uh, coming up. One of the things I wanted to mention um, a couple of people asked about using these catalogs, uh, and, and some people didn't realize that if you double tap, if you take your mouse, here's your mouse, if you double tap the screen, it enlarges it and pulls it in. And once you activate the enlargement feature, this little extra box appears at the top of the screen. And on it, you can further uh, zoom in a bit if you want to. You can come in quite a bit, all right? And uh, you can use the button here to zoom back out uh, to uh, where the page was before to keep going. All right, you just click that, and there it is, okay? And also on the lower left, and sometimes they're on the upper right, depending on the format we use, um, there are these little boxes. And what they do is they create a, a band of images of the entire catalog. So if you want to browse to a speci specific area, you want to look at lacquer, or you want to look at jades or paintings, you can just scroll until you get there. And uh, if you click on it, it'll take you right to that page, and then you can close this out like that. Okay, just a, just a little tip. All right, and now let's move along to the next lot in this sale uh, that we're gonna talk about briefly is this. This really nice Chin Lung period lime green ground Famille Rose vase. It's about 14 inches tall uh, and is beautifully decorated. It is not a marked example though. So as a result, the estimate is fairly reasonable for one of this quality, $141,000 to $282,000. It's a lot of money still, I realize, but, but were it marked, uh, you, could, you, you could probably you know, multiply that estimate by four, five, or even six, I would suspect, pretty easily. Um, but here's the scene, and it's a, a really wonderful scene. I love the root. Uh, notice the, the, the root work uh, balustrade running around this terrace where these uh, 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 immortals and uh, fi mortal figures are seated, uh, beautifully shaded uh, enamels down here and the flowers and so forth. Here's a dragon in the river being teased with fellows holding over a pearl for him to jump up at. And um, then you have this uh, nice scroll work uh, ground incised into the porcelain and then enameled over. And just beautiful quality. Just really, it's a really, really, really pretty vase. And uh, we'll see how it does, okay? It's just a, a it's an elegant example, no matter, no matter with or without a mark, okay? The world is obsessed with marks, all right? And they shouldn't be. There's some great things out there floating around that aren't marked, especially with Kung Shi pieces. All right, and then on to this. This is one of the, a, a, a Chun box. Uh, this is a 15-inch uh, Chin Lung Mark and Period box. We've seen them before. They turn up uh, now and again. 
these were uh, made, not in huge quantities, but they made a few of them. And this is a particularly nice one, um, I must say. Uh, the, uh, the carving on it is uh, extremely fine, uh, beautifully done. Here's, here you have these, the, the ubiquitous basket at the bottom of the, uh, with all the uh, symbols in it, the fl flaming pearls and rue heads and all this other stuff. And uh, Buddha figure at the center here of the mark, dra flanked by dragons. He's sitting apparently in the pearl himself. And uh, just a terrific example. And it's estimated, as I said, $155,000 to $212,000. So it'll be interesting to see how that does. A couple of these have turned up in the market in the last couple of years, and they didn't sell. So we'll see uh, how this one does. All right. Some of them do sell. Some of them don't. All right. And then over here to the bubble bowl. This is a Sung Dynasty Junyao bubble bowl. This is a very small bowl. It's only three or so, three, a little over three inches in diameter. Uh, it is uh, estimated at, uh, what's the estimate on this? Pretty big estimate, two hundred twelve dollars to $282,000. But these are extremely rare, and this is a quite fine one. The, uh, the color of the, the ground on it uh, is uh, really well done. Lots of bubbles. You can, you can actually see them from here. Um, and you can enlarge it quite a bit more, get, really get into it. Uh, there, there's the bowl. Uh, notice the, uh, the lighter colored rim uh, where the glaze pulled back away from it, revealing the uh, underbody. And here's a side shot of it. And as you can see here, this color up here is the color of this. This is where the glaze was applied and pulled down over the bowl. And uh, these two colors are fairly uh, uh, similar. The top, the top part does have some glaze on it, uh, but beautifully potted and a nice, nice inward sweep as it got to the rim. Beautifully done, and as I mentioned, small, okay, only three inches. Uh, so we'll see how it does. We know how the big ones do, so we'll see how this does, all right? And uh, then on to this. This is a, uh, a rather exceptional Shendi, uh, um, yellow ground, underglazed blue uh, decorated dish. It's a small one. It's nine inches in diameter, but beautiful quality decoration. And uh, if you pull it up, if you come over here and look at it, you really want to look at this. Because, again, these are like the Chinlung Moonflash. Fakes of these turn up in the market all over the country all the time. Um, they're, they're all, virtually all of them, are, all of them are fakes. Uh, this is a real one. And uh, one of the things you can see, the way they photograph, they did a great job photographing this, is you can see the difference in colors uh, once you blow it up between in the, in the yellow ground, for example. And it goes from fairly dark up here in the Cavetto down into the center here. It goes from light to dark. All right, and this was just due to the, uh, you know, the, the inconsistencies of uh, enameling. Here's an area where it went very thin and almost turned white. All right. And uh, the underglazed blue decoration on this piece is beautiful and, and, and pretty three-dimensional. Uh, if you look here, you can see the reflections of the light uh, because the blue actually rises up above the enamel a bit. And um, you can see the reflections from the, from the cameras when they, when they took the pictures of this. And uh, the estimate on this is 70 to about uh, uh, $100,000, just a little under 100000 U.S. Uh, but it's a wonderful, wonderful example. And uh, we'll see how it does, okay? And now we're going to mosey over. Uh, we can get the thing to go. Hold on. Uh, try this. It seems to be freezing. There we go. We'll try another page here. Okay, no, that's the last one in this catalog. Okay. Oh, that's right. We're going to pop over here to the next one. We're going over to Christie's now. Sorry about that. And uh, as you all know, and if, you, if you've been paying any attention, they've been promoting this, uh, this spectacular uh, pink ground uh, moon flask. Uh, it's around six inches tall. Uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, coloring on this. I can't say it enough. And it was probably, uh, Rosemary Scott did the write-up on this. She think it was probably done um, uh, during the uh, period of Tang Ying, uh, when he was the, he was the overseer of the kilns, but uh, uh, straddling both the Yongchen and Qinlung period, and uh, they featured it, of course, on the cover of the catalog. Why wouldn't they? And uh, we're going to hop over and take a look at it. Um, uh, in, well, in a minute, we're going to talk about this first. This is the uh, this really attractive um, uh, cloisonné uh, pot that they 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 have in this sale. It's got a pretty big estimate in it 
of, uh, of what, is, what is the estimate? 80, uh, 70 to 110 thousand dollars is a good write-up on it. It last sold at Christie's around 13 years ago, which can be good and it can be bad. But they have a nice uh, write-up on this piece. And if you like Cloisonne, this is a pretty unusual one. And again, it has this, uh, it is done in this sort of archaistic form with these masks, which were very popular during the Qinlung period. But the uh, quality of work on this is really superb, really, really superb in the, in the, gold, in the uh, gilt uh, bronze uh, relief areas and this nice uh, sort of almost... Uh, tea dust green glaze, uh, tea dust green enamel ground on it, okay? And here's a look at the mark, okay? Again, the four character mark. And uh, how big was this? This wasn't terribly big. Uh, four inches tall, all right? So we'll see how that does, all right? But a handsome example, really handsome. And um, now we're gonna go over to uh, this, the uh, uh, really beautiful, um, uh, they speculating on the, this is an unmarked piece, but the Rosemary Scott wrote on this, and she believes it's from the Chenwa period because it's a, a double Vajra dish, um, which are, are quite rare, and there's a fascinating history about this pattern. If you know what a Vajra is, those are those bronze uh, uh, Tibetan ritual uh, objects that are flared. This is two of them crisscrossing one another like this and like this, and they did them in gilt bronze, uh, and they, they appear on the market fairly often. They made a lot of them. But this one was made during the Chinwa period, they believe, based on another example in the Palace Museum. And uh, Rosemary uh, Scott did a, a write-up on the history of this pattern and how it came into such vogue during the Ming Dynasty and explaining how in the Yuan, um, uh, um, the Mongols became fascinated with um, uh, Lamanist Buddhism and adopted it and befriended uh, uh, the, the Tibetan monks and encouraged interaction with them because they wanted Tibet to be under the fold, obviously, of the Mongol Empire. And they, they uh, became adherents to Buddhism. And this, this of course, continued right through. And uh, she does a great job explaining the uh, history of this pattern and this bowl. And though it's not marked, um, it's, a, it's quite a rare example and should do very well. It's a handsome piece, okay? And now we're going to mosey on over to, uh, let's see here, number 40. There we are, this. This is a hung, this is a really rare thing, and I, I thought the estimate on it was very reasonable, uh, as as high as it is, uh, fifty-seven thousand to eighty-five thousand dollars. This particular form originated um, in in a Hongxi period, and uh, these particular pieces were they believe were made specifically for the emperor for his personal use uh, uh, for the uh, for the altar, and uh, it is around a, a little over a foot tall. And these came also came back into style very heavily during the Qinlung period. You'll often see these uh, in Qinlung period examples because Qinlung uh, potters often uh, copied a lot of Ming forms and Ming style things. And there's a good looking um, uh, um, uh, shot of it over here on the left. Beautiful color, beautiful yellow, that beautiful Ming yellow. And she talks uh, at, at great length about it, about Hong Chi. He was the second son of Chen Hua. Um, and what's also interesting is that the Hongxi period, they made a lot less porcelain. The Imperial Palace was not ordering a lot of porcelain, especially early on in the Hongxi period. Um, so uh, Hongxi porcelain is, uh, is rarer than Chen Hua. All right. He he was. I guess he maybe he was a tight with money. I'm not sure why. What the, uh, the whole, you can read the article. It sort of goes into it. But um, here it is. And um, if you blow it up again, you see that lovely, uh, 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 you know, early Ming yellow enamel, just like we saw in that dish over at the Sotheby's sale. And you see these variations in colors going down over the piece, which are very critical uh, in examining these pieces because the fakes um, tend to have much more consistent coloring. And then you can see here where the yellow at the very bottom evens up again considerably, gets darker. All right. And uh, that's a, it's quite a pot. It's just, it's just a beautiful example. And we'll see how it does. All right. But come and read the articles that, that Rosemary writes. Uh, she's great to read, very understandable, and gives you lots of places to look up for uh, other, other similar items. And now on to the main event, which is this, which is this uh, um, flattened moon flask. And what's interesting about this moon flask is it's only six inches in diameter. It's very small. 
And what's also interesting is that often with moon flasks, um, um, when they do these landscape scenes, they'll have often on one side flowers and things like this. And on the other side, they might have figures or animals or birds, and they often change them. On this particular flask, it's more or less exactly the same pattern on both sides. All right. And uh, uh, here, here's the, uh, here's the uh, entry for it for the auction. And it's estimated at uh, around 800, 950,000 to 1.1 million. Um, and there's a, a, a good write up on it over here. It had, interestingly, it had belonged to Alfred Morrison. And uh, you may not know who he, who he was off the top of your head. He founded the, the famous Font Hill Heirloom Collection. All right, and uh, it went down um, through uh, successive owners and last sold in 2007 at, uh, at Christie's in Hong Kong, okay? And, uh, but the, the history of the Font Hill collection is really fascinating, and they are reproducing stickers today of things from the Font Hill collection, so be really careful, all right? They are turning up on copies of Sung pieces and Ming pieces, and you name it, they're copying them, all right? But uh, Rosemary Scott on this also, she did a great, uh, great uh, write-up on it, and um, explains the uh, the uh, uh, the application of the enamels and how it was quite unique, and how it was done under the uh, under the directorship of Tang Ying, who was the uh, kiln master for both Yong Chen and uh, Chen Lung. Um, he 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 was in the last years of Yong Chen's reign, and he was there for the first of ten or fifteen years of Chen Lung's. All right, but she gets into this uh, this uh, pattern known as the flower brocade design, and uh, it's really quite interesting. And we'll go back out here. It is here's the oops, go back one. There it is. Here is the uh, um, foot rim of this. All right, and as you can see, it only has the four character mark, which is not that unusual on small objects of the Chin Lung period. They often um, use four character marks. We saw the four character mark, for example, used on that uh, very nice uh, Chin Lung bronze a few minutes ago that was only uh, four inches tall. Well, here's the here's the here's the bottom of this, and notice the beautiful blue, uh, flawless blue ground that the seal is floating in. Just really well done. Okay, exceptional. And uh, that's it for the Christie's sale. They also have their general sale, which is online, which is a much larger catalog, um, uh, about 280 lots. That last auction from uh, Christie's only has about 24 or 5 lots in it. This is the big, the big catalog with more general goods. There's some great things in here, though. Some very nice jades. There's uh, some excellent celadons if you're a celadon buyer and so forth. And there's this. This is something... Um, it's really quite, I think maybe the best thing in the catalog is this rather fabulous Ming Dynasty bronze uh, inlaid with silver and gold. It's just an elegant thing. It has a pretty good size estimate on it. It's estimated at uh, 145 to $210,000, but it's pretty good size. Uh, it is, yeah, it's 14 inches uh, in height. That's a big bronze. Very handsome and uh, superbly well done. The casting on this really looked excellent. Here's some more of it here. Here you can see the gold. There's some uh, patination taking place and so forth, but uh, a really handsome example, all right? And now on to the other sale, which is the bottom sale. In this sale, if you're, if you're, not, you know, if you're not a buyer of you know, $100,000 and $50,000 and $1 million things, and you have the opportunity, um, the bottom sale is a great place to buy uh, things if you're a collector um, without an endless budget. And so far, I'm not saying that Bonhams doesn't sell high-end things. They do. They sell unbelievably high-end things. But this particular catalog is not one of those sales. And um, it is, however, an extremely interesting auction. And this is right off the bat. You look at the inside of it. There is a lot of good blue and white, uh, transition, late Ming transitional period and Kung Shi blue and white and Chen Lung blue and white. And one of the things I saw in here that was rather, a really interesting piece was this. This very nice Kang Shi double spout uh, wine pot, okay, um, I call it a ewer, and it has this nice uh, uh, gate handle on the top, beautifully decorated. The pattern is sort of well known, but uh, double spouted examples are pretty rare, and it has a fairly modest uh, estimate, eight to twelve hundred pounds. Um, so you might want to check that out if you're if you're a Kung Shi collector. That seems pretty reasonable, and uh, they have a, a lot of good plates and dishes and so forth. Um, and then scrolling through, there's more and more and more and more. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, a very full sale. And most of the estimates on here, I think, are extremely reasonable. 
Um, so if you're if you're not if you if you're a dealer and you're looking for inventory and you have the opportunity, you might want to check this sale out because I think there's some good buying here because uh, there's so much of it. This is a, a really Abu Danza auction, okay? And one of the things that they did have, and it was this. I wanted to point this out uh, because this type of vase often turns up um, during the late 19th century. Okay, you've seen, you've all seen these with this cafe au lait ground and this bronzed, uh, glazed uh, porcelain. Okay, this is an 18th or early 19th century one. I always think of these as being a little bit earlier. They came back into vogue late in the 19th century, and they often used all kinds of enamels and stuff on them. But this is an earlier one. All right, so you want to. They do exist out there. This one was 20 is 22 inches tall and estimated at two to three thousand uh, uh, pounds. Which is not unusual, not not unreasonable, I don't think, for a pot that size in a beautiful glaze. So don't always assume the pieces with these bronzed, uh, faux bronze glazed uh, relief areas are uh, 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 late 19th, early 20th century pieces. They aren't. But they're also making copies of those, of course. So you want to be very, very careful. And you scroll through. There's a nice section in this sale with bamboo and uh, uh, some nice brush pots if you're a brush pot fan. There's also um, some really good ivory. Um, ivory, as you know, can't be imported into the U.S. without a CITES permit, so if you decide to bid, check on that before you do. And there are a lot of uh, later Ming bronzes in here and, and early Qing bronzes. There's a pile of them, okay, and some nice gilt splashed examples. And uh, one of the pieces I wanted to point out was this, because one of these was actually on eBay. It may still be on there. I haven't really checked. But this is one of these um, um, uh, Yuan, Sung Yuan, early, early Ming um, bronzes. And uh, you've seen them before. Here it is, okay? You've seen this. Uh, we talked about one. There's the dragon, uh, dragon head with the loop handles, nice patina on it, um, nice looking base, uh, reticulated base, uh, or relief work base rather. Archaistic gilt splash bronze vase, early Ming, okay? A little conservative on the dating. This is a big one, though, 15 inches tall, estimated three to 5,000 pounds, all right? These do turn up on eBay. So if you're an eBay buyer um, and you want check prices and estimates on things that turn up on eBay, you can always come over here, go through the catalog, especially the moderate, more moderately priced catalogs, and check it out, all right? Um, because you might you'd be able to... Uh, 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 you know, get some accurate pricing in your head before you, before you decide to place a bid. There's a section here also with some good Japanese works of art, and there's a ton of snuff bottles. Uh, if you're a snuff bottle buyer, there are some great ones. There's even one in here that looks awful, awful lot like one we sold uh, uh, about four years ago, which is this one. The one with the dog on it and the script, okay? These are Guangxu uh, period pots. They have a 12-character mark on the bottom. Um, quite unusual, um, and uh, the estimate on this seems pretty reasonable, 800 uh, to 11, uh, 1,200 pounds. As I recall, the one that we sold, uh, we actually sold it on eBay, and I think it went for about 7000 or $6,000, so um, you might want to check those out, okay? And um, that's it. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, speaking of eBay. Um, hold on a second, everybody. Don't run away. There was a there was a plate a bowl on here on this sale. I'm gonna scroll back. Stay with me. You, this is worth it. I swear it's worth it. Um, where are those blue and white bowls? As I okay, here it is. This pair of bowls right here. Okay, these are these reticulated rim um, uh, bowls. All right. Uh, can, un, unusual blue and white bowls, uh, each painted uh, uh, with exterior flowers, four seasons beneath an open work uh, swastika and geometric ground border, blah, 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 blah. Here they are. All right. On eBay um, right now, um, there is one of these bowls. Okay. Here it is. All right. And it'll be in the newsletter this week, so uh, be sure to check it out. Um, there it is. And this one has the uh, open work down below. It's probably uh, uh, also a Kangxi example, and uh, I just happened to notice that when I was doing the uh, catalog, uh, this video rather this morning. Okay, and these this pair has an estimate of three to five thousand pounds, so it'll give you some idea what this bowl is probably worth. All righty, and um, that's it for the week. Okay, sorry about that little bit of dead air back there. I, I forgot where that pair of bowls went, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. 
and have a, uh, a great weekend. And we'll do the, um, we'll also be getting the uh, eBay auction results up for the week uh, later today. All righty. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.